good, friends and family? Mr. Flip Flop here. Been a long couple of weeks, but I'm getting the second part of starting a business in the Dominican Republic back to you guys. <clears throat> so, first part was us constituting the company, all right, making the company a legal and legit company in the Dominican Republic, recognized by the country of the Dominican Republic. Now we're going to go into location and setting up your business. So now you finally constituted your company, right? Paperwork's done. As I said before, so pause right here. Lawyer, accountant. Without those, you should not be doing any business. I have gone that route and things have worked out and I've seen people go that route and things not work out. Most of the bad stories or horror stories you will hear are from people who didn't do the proper due diligence and opened the business and then got screwed in the end because their paperwork wasn't right. And it happens a lot down here. So my advice is to constitute the company, have a legit and legal company. The way you do that is by having a lawyer and an accountant. Okay, so we constitute the company, our lawyer, our accountant took care of everything, all the paperwork's back. We have a legalized company in the Dominican Republic. Now, we're looking for a location. Are you gonna have a Dominican business or a tourist business? I currently have, Flip Flop is currently a tourist business, so we deal in the tourist town. Um, I have other businesses, smaller businesses that deal with only Dominicans. And the reason I say that is this, the pay scale. Minimum wage in this country is 8,000 pesos, a little under $200. But in the tourist areas, such as here in Sasua, minimum wage for service industry is 10,000 pesos. Actually, 10300 to be exact, which is $200 and a couple bucks. Okay, so that's the minimum wage in the service industry, bars, restaurants, inside of tourist areas. Now, this same location inside of a Dominican area, that would be 8000 pesos, okay? And some places even as low as $6,000. Um, I have a small cafeteria on the other side of the country. My employees make 4000 a month, and they only work part-time. So it's based on location, type of industry. There's a big scale of, of, of what you do, and it tells you, it breaks down each minimum wage and how much you can pay each employee. Oh, I'm sorry, what the minimum is you can pay each employee. Um, certain industries are more, certain industries are less. Locations, as, as I said, tourist and uh, local Dominican, and it becomes a, a scale on what you have to pay them. Okay, so we got to that part. Now, people always ask me about the 90-day rule. In this country, they have a very good labor union, and I'll tell you why. After you hire somebody, once they work for you for 90 days, they are basically a full-time employee. You have up to 90 days to fire them without any liability, anything. You just pay them for the days they worked, and they're gone. Now, pay periods here are the 15th and the 30th, okay? So, for the 90-day rule, once it's 90 days, they're allotted to a certain amount of money, which is called liquidation. Now, liquidation is basically a, a, a unemployment, you know. Um, it's a one-time fee. You pay it 10 days after you fire them or they quit. Uh, if, they, if they quit, it's less money. If you fire them, it's more money. And it's a formula. You, you put the employee information in, you put the dates they worked, how much they made, and the formula breaks it down to how much they get. Um, also, what you need to know about employees is when they get pregnant. If your employee, almost every employee makes female employees take pregnancy tests prior. The reason being is you do not want an employee to come in that's already pregnant. Because what happens is when they start working for you and they're pregnant, you can't fire them. Um, and the thing with the pregnancy is you might as well send them home because after a while they can do nothing for you and you still have to pay them anyway. You have to pay them, I believe, four to six months after the pregnancy and then you have to give them the, their job right back at the same salary they made prior. So with a pregnancy, you always wanna make sure when you hire a female, she's not pregnant prior. If she gets pregnant during, okay, I've seen people fire the employee just to avoid the long-term pay, payout and just pay them the liquidation just to save some money. Um, so that, so back to location. Location is key because you know you have to know who you're selling to and what you're selling. Um, so if you're gonna be selling to tourists, that's your main objective. You want it in a nice tourist area, a good location where you have a lot of foot traffic. Okay, um, as I said, Susua, this is more of a tourist town. As you see flip-flop, I'm at the entrance to the beach. Um, I get a lot of foot traffic. And actually, it's weird because previously there was not a lot of foot traffic coming through the plaza, but only to the beach. 
I still have people now walking to the beach and don't even, do not even know that flip flop exists. They don't even look up because there's been no traffic here for so long. But we develop more traffic and things are looking better and better. And now people realize well, when you see the yellow steps, that's flip flop. So location is key. Okay, you wanna drive traffic. You wanna place with a lot of foot traffic. I helped build a bar for a friend of mine and was in a good location, but there wasn't a lot of foot traffic. There was a lot of moto and taxi traffic that were passing by going to the other clubs, but there wasn't a lot of foot traffic. It was just weird, but you have to be in a certain location to make sure, and that's the same as in America. You wanna make sure you're in a great location that you're seen. Even if I wasn't thinking about getting a taco or a drink, now I see it, let me stop in. So location is key, and like I said, it's based on do you want a Dominican business, meaning local, or do you want a uh, tourist business where you're serving tourists, and you're depending on the, the influx of tourists to come in and out. Myself, my small cafeteria, that's for Dominican. I'm across from a school and across from two office buildings. They come over to eat breakfast, they eat lunch, and that's pretty much my day. Doesn't make a lot of money, but it's consistent, and it, you know, I send that to the kids, whatever it may be. So location is everything. Uh, what over the 90 day rule? Now, something I will break down for everybody who wants to be an entrepreneur and wants to start their own business. Language barrier. We can go back and discuss speaking Spanish. I will tell you this, I speak Spanish, but I still have a buffer. The reason is I'm a shrewd businessman. I'm sort of an asshole when it comes to business. Um, they call me a brute, whatever you wanna say, but I don't accept games, I don't accept nonsense. Everything here is negotiable, and I want the best price. Um, I, tell, I tell my managers all the time, if that company's not gonna respect my money, another company will. You know, and, and their way of doing things is different than our way of doing things. So for me, I have a buffer. And this is how it works on, on my end, how I personally do things. I speak Spanish, but sometimes I don't wanna talk to the, to the middle guy. I wanna talk to the boss. So if I can't talk to the boss, I have my buffer, talk to the middle guy. He'll never actually talk to me but she'll relay messages to me. He may be standing right there, but he'll never actually come up and talk to me because I don't want to talk to him. I want someone to talk in my, on my behalf. I'm going to tell her what I want. He's actually going to see me talking to her, and then he's, he's going to want to come talk to me. When I'm, I'm like, no, and she's like, no. You know, That's how we do things. And this protects me because I can go off sometimes when it comes to, when I know someone's playing games with me and trying to price gouge me, I kind of go off sometimes. So that protects me and protects them and protects the business. So, uh, because you know, in America, you know, we when we negotiate, we, we negotiate real hard. So I'm, I'm just used to that. Um, they're not used to those negotiating tactics. You know, being a little aggressive. So to avoid problems, because I've had problems before where someone thought I was threatening them when I was really just being aggressive with my negotiating, saying, you know, we're going to do it this way. We're not going to do anything. Um, I use a buffer. Now I feel a buffer is needed whether you speak Spanish or you don't. And the reason is because they'll get a better price. They'll get better results if they use our mindset with their culture. And let me explain this. Meaning, I have a business mindset. I have a hustling mindset. I'm, I'm telling my buffer, she is, my manager has learned how to deal with people on, on a business level. I tell her, forget the personal stuff, forget being friends, business first. So she's learned how I deal with things. Once, once she adapted to how I do things and forgot how she did things, now she deals with other businesses and vendors and such on my level. And she tells them, hey, it's gonna be this way or it's not gonna be. And my biggest line is, if you don't accept my money, someone else will. And she uses that line, and it's weird because to see her, you know, after a couple of years, really get herself together and understand, well, you know what? Greg's right and everything Greg's been saying has been working, so we're gonna do it this way. So I, use a, I personally use a buffer. I recommend buffers because sometimes someone will try to work you over if they know you don't understand or they know you, that you know, they, can, they can say certain things and you'll accept it. And I've seen business people just accept certain prices, accept certain exp explanations, and be like, okay, and come out with money. Me, I won't accept anything. I wanna sit there and know the ins and outs and outs and ins. You know, I, I don't know everything about everything, but I'm gonna try my best to learn it and understand it, and I wanna know what my money's going to if, if, if you're telling me one thing and I'm, not, I'm seeing something, you know, something's not right, especially with price changes. Um, President, they called me the other day, said, hey man, we're gonna raise our prices next month. I, I put in a big order, no problem. They gave me a heads up. You always wanna know what's going on. Why did my price change week to week? Why did, why did uh, this week the, the chicken cost this amount and next week it's this amount? You know, I question everything. 
So having a buffer helps me with that. And then she can come back and explain to me if it makes sense why this went that way. So I recommend a buffer for all businesses and that helps with the language barrier in case you don't speak perfect Spanish and it helps get certain things through that you want to get done that you may not be, may not be able to get done as a foreigner. Uh, so buffer, that's something I really recommend. Now, people talk about how I do business. I said, this video will be more about how I do business and, and give you an idea of what you should be doing to control your business. Every business is different. I developed a system. Now, my ex-wife was a waitress, very good waitress when I met her. I learned service through her. I later became a personal trainer. Uh, before that, I, had a, uh, I worked for a mobile diagnostic company. So everything was service. We serviced doctors. I serviced the people in the gym. You know, it was service. I developed a system because service in this country is not very good at all. And it's not the people, but you have some people, which goes back to the 90-day rule, that will come in and just collect a check. They're only there to collect a check. They know you got to pay them regardless, so I work hard. Um, and you know you have three types of workers, those that are engaged, those that are disengaged, and those that are completely disengaged. Meaning the engaged person, he wants to work hard, he wants to do good. The disengaged does just enough to get by, and the completely disengaged, they don't even want to be there. They're just coming in, waiting for payday, and they out. So I developed a system in service, which when people come here, they realize the service is different here than it is anywhere else. So everything here is service and getting things the way I want them done. So as I said, service is everything. Now, you honestly will get a lot of lazy people. They become a cancer. <clears throat> I actually say, you rid of the lazy people early. For myself, with the 90 day rule, I can kind of control that. I know who's gonna work within the first 10 days. And I'll tell you how. You can see consistencies in what a person wants to do and will do. Do they ask questions? Do they look to do something? I had a girl here, she was beautiful, but she didn't want to do nothing. She stood around. As she's being trained, instead of her following, watching everything and learning, she just stood there, waiting to be told what to do. That's not someone I want, I want with me because they're not looking to engage. Um, so like I said, you'll get the, the lazy ones, they're cancer, get them out. Uh, sometimes you get teams where Two or three people will team up and they'll try to control the business. Sometimes you gotta get rid of one just to, to prove to the other two, hey, we got I'm in control. You know, uh, they'll push people out with attitudes and arguments just to control that area of the business. You have that's that's everywhere in the world, but here you have to control a little bit more because there's a lot of what they say chismoso, where they talk a lot of crap, and people will get fed up. I've had people quit over that, where they go, I can't deal with this crap, I'm out. You know, so you gotta watch that. Um, Another thing is, I mentioned lawsuits. <clears throat> now, if we go back to your lawyer and your accountant, you're protected. I personally had a situation in a, in a bar in Puerto Plata where on, on, on camera, I, had the, I caught the waitress stealing, on camera. She goes, she quits, she signs the affidavit, like, hey, listen, I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna walk away, no problem. He's not gonna press charges, thank you. No problem, right? She walks away. I got taken to court five times after that by the same woman. My lawyer didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. I beat her every time. It may have lasted a, a, a day or two, but it was the hassle of continually going back to court. And in my mind, I'm like, what judge is continually helping this girl sue me? <laughs> you know, after all these losses in the same courtroom. So eventually got thrown out, but it was the hassle. They can sue you, they can try to sue you for little things, which is why your lawyer and your accountant protect you. You know, I keep saying lawyer and accountant because everything with that is covering your own ass. Cover your ass. We're, if you took me as a businessman and you took the same exact business with a Dominican businessman, I will get sued 25 times more than he would because they're going to they're gonna think we, we have all the money and they're not going to bother him. That's just how it is. They sue Dominicans as well, but we'll get sued first. So you want to protect yourself. Lawyer, accountant, protects you on everything. All paperwork is documented. Even when someone quits, they gotta write me a letter saying they quit. Even when I have the other paperwork for, from my, my people, I have to get them to write me a letter saying, hey, I quit, I'm sorry, I'm out. So you just wanna protect yourself with everything. Um, people mention uh, <clears throat> stealing. We'll get into that in the next video. I feel with every business, you need to be here. Um, you need to be on site. You know, or have somebody you can trust on site. 
Now, scaling is pretty difficult in this country because you know no one's gonna do the things with our mindset. You know, my mindset is everything is, has to be perfect. I have crazy OCD, so I'm always, you may see me organizing stuff and cleaning up, that's just me. And I want it done that way. My, my team has learned to do it that way over time, but every now and then it'll get lazy, so you gotta be on top of that. As far as stealing, you gotta be on top of your numbers. Your accountant has to be on top of your numbers. You know, you have to make sure every day I'm writing everything down. If you took a motor concho going to pick me up some water, I've got to write that down, that extra 50 pesos for the motor concho. Every single dime has to be accounted for, and, and every inventory has to be accounted for. Now, when they see you're on top of it, they'll be on top of it. You understand? So you actually have to be more on top of your business than anybody. And it was mentioned to me the other day, doing business down here actually becomes a job, and it does. So... You know, I'm scaling now. My manager's actually pretty good. Um, I'm scaling because you know, we've been here for a, a, a while now, and I'm hoping they pick it up. But I will never just totally disengage myself because I have to be here. Um, so you want to, as it's more personal, you want to scale as much as you can, but you can never give someone total control of the business and walk away thinking that it's okay. You actually have to scale and still keep, still do what you've been doing, but maybe a little less. All right, so. Like I said, we're constituted now. We, we got the location. We're a tourist business or a, or a Dominican business. Excuse me. We know what we're doing. We got our managers in place. We've set up a system. Whatever your system is. This is just my system. Um, and now we're moving forward to start the business. Okay, so this has been the business, starting business in Dominican Republic part two. I'll get this video out ASAP and I'll work on part three for you guys. And that'll go more into once the business is started, uh, investments, uh, what, what you need to do to get, get your, um, cover yourself before your business actually starts to make profit. All right, so I appreciate you guys. I'm doing my best to get these videos out. Um, and yeah, as you guys know, in, in business, I'm very busy, do a lot of business. Uh, but I appreciate everyone. Appreciate the love, Mr. Flip Flop, and I'm out.